Oh, hello. Um, my name's Adam Phillips, and I'm about to show you through um, a morphing tutorial in Toon Boom Animate Pro 2. Um, Animate Pro 2 is, is not released at the time of this recording. I'll be using um, a review copy that was um, sent to me. But uh, so there may be some um, changes to the interface or, you know, functionality. There may be, even be one or two little glitches that you see um, along the way. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, talk you through the uses and the limitations and the basics of morphing, which, um, as you'll see, is kind of like if you're a Flash user, it's the, if it's the Flash equivalent of shape tweening, which um, can take two key drawings that you do, and it automatically in-betweens those for you. Um, but uh, most of the time, or a lot of the time, especially with more complex shapes, um, a more for a shape tween can often screw up badly because what the computer is trying to do is guess what you mean. And if you have um, one shape, you know how you want it to move into the second shape. But the computer doesn't necessarily know that and it might guess the wrong way. So it's automatic um, tweening could, um, could be completely different to what you expect. So there are ways to control a morph in Toon Boom, uh, just like there are in Flash. Um, using hints and things. Um, so this this series we're going to quickly talk about um, the basics of morphing, the, the uses, the limitations and so forth. So let's open up Animate Pro 2. Animate Pro. It says Animate Pro but um, this is the review copy. Um, now let's see, Morph Tute might do. I've, uh, I've been doing a few uh, playing with a few files, this is the one that I want, it's got nothing in it. Right, so jumping right into it, I'm going to... Um, the example I like to use straight off the bat when teaching people morphing is um, that of cigarette smoke or incense, if you're scared of smokers smoking. Um, and so I'm just quickly drawing here a... Um, what would appear to be, uh, say if you've got a cigarette here, or a joystick or something like that. Um, I'm just going to fill it, and now, uh, what I was saying before about doing two, two key drawings, what you've got to do, what you've got to keep in mind is that even with traditional animation where you've, you're an animator and you do the key drawings and then an in-betweener comes along and fills in the gaps between your drawings, the in-betweener isn't going to do something completely random. They're going to see how you you plan the movement, how you want the movement to go. So when you're doing your drawings for morphing, make sure that you um, that you put uh, that you make it um, kind of what do you say? You make it uh, understandable. You make it reasonable. So in my second drawing here, you can see how with each a curve or, or a little lump or whatever in the first drawing, I'm making it continue and kind of resolve to something in the second drawing. And these aren't just random shapes. I'm animating here. And that's what you should be doing when, you, when you're doing your key drawings for morphing. You should, be, um, you should be bearing that in mind, that you want the software to easily understand what you are trying to do. So... So what I've done there, let's have a look at the two, two drawings. I'll um, go back to this one. Now you can see that I've got, um, we've got a lump on the left, then it, then it curves over to the right in a kind of a number three shape, and then going up, uh, it's got another lump on, on the left, and then it curves back over to the right. And now if I go to my second key drawing, the same thing happens, but it's in a different, um, a different kind of uh, design. But you'll see that number one here is number one there. I'll turn on the onion skin so you can see that. Uh, this uh, number three shape, this three shape, is uh, continued up and back here on the first key, this one, number two, number two. So what we've got from each drawing, we've got shapes moving and resolving um, reasonably. There's nothing completely random about this drawing and, and when you're an animator doing key drawings you shouldn't really be doing anything completely random. Everything should be planned unless you're doing an, a random effect like 
you know, some chaotic um, uh, flash explosion or lightning uh, electricity arcing or something. So bear that in mind when you're doing your keys. You want to you want to treat the the software not as a slave that will do all your drawings for you, but as a specialist that you call in to take care of a, a job and make it look good. All right. So when we come back in the second video, uh, we'll continue on with this example and apply a morph. See you very very soon.